Good morning and welcome to our talk this morning. Uh, today is the 11th of May 2021. My name is Don Butler. The interview is taking place at the WA Baseball Museum, Empire Baseball Park at Tom Bateman Reserve in Thornley. Uh, we are conducting the interview for the WA Baseball Museum and uh, I today I'm talking to Mel O'Hearn. Mel, if good starts, if you can agree to do the interview and if you give the organisation the rights to the interview. No problem. Thank you. If I can start by saying that um, Mel O'Hearn was a born and bred Midland boy. He went on to become an outstanding baseballer over 20 years, representing the Swan Districts Baseball Club, West Stirling Baseball Club, Western Australia in the Claxton Shield, and the ultimate goal of any sportsman to represent his country overseas, which Mel did in 1973. 2021 saw Mel inducted into the WA Baseball Hall of Fame. Good morning, Mel, and welcome. Good morning, and thank you, Doc. My pleasure. So, you were born 17th of January 1942 in Midland? Correct. What, what hospital would that have been? St Andrews Hospital in oh, yeah. Midland. Similar, familiar name in Midland. Don't think it exists anymore, mate. <laughs> no, the Midland Gate Shopping Centre. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, correct. And, um, so when you get home, Mum and Dad took you home, where were you living? Uh, my folks were in Stoneville, up in Stoneville. Mm. Uh, we lived there until I was five. I, my recollections of Stoneville are fairly vague. My first memories was treading on a bobtail when I was about three years, four oh. years of age. But uh, one of my lasting memories of Stoneville was because my father had uh, quite an extensive uh, chook farm there. Uh, there was a lot of snakes. Mm. And uh, I've got photos of some awesome sized snakes that he killed on oh. that up there. But to supplement, the, um, the chook farm didn't carry all their income. Mm. He, uh, he started work down in the middle and uh, WAGR workshops right. as a car and wagon lifter was his a job lifter. down there, car and wagon lifter, yes. So when did you actually move to Midland? In 1947. Right. I remember him bogging the car in the in the uh, yard of the house we moved into the first day we went down there. Where was that? Uh, on the corner of Pointon Avenue and Morrison Road. Right. It's now been replaced by about four little villas mm. on the block. Were there any other family members? Uh, I've got a sister, Karen. She's still alive and mm. lives up in Les Murdy. Mm. Mum was one of your greatest fans <laughs> later in life. Yeah. We can talk about her a little later. Mm -hmm. However, so as a young bloke, uh, you started school? At the at Midland Primary. Which yeah. is the existing Midland Primary? Uh, no, it's the old, I think it turned into a dome cafe. Oh, right. Where I went to, went to school, where I started school. Yeah. Became the dome cafe. In fact, my mother started school there also. Go on. Back in mm. 1920. Mm. Same, same, same building. Yeah. So you went through to uh, what grade seven there, and then then continued on to yeah, I started high school in the same premises. I started at Midland Primary in 1948. That's mm. when I remember starting. Mm. Uh, and then from there, I went to Midland High, which was 55 to 57. And in that period, uh, we were into what became Governor Sterling in 1959. But right. uh, I'd finished school by that time. I only went to uh, third year high, junior right, level, yeah. because in those days, uh, my father said, "You've got to have a trade, son." Yeah. Uh, there was no sense of me going on and further studies to uni or whatever. So no. uh, it was the WAJR, WAJR workshops where I started as a junior worker in what, 1958. Was it easy to get a job there then? Very easy. Yeah. 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 What sort of days, work were you doing as a junior worker? Junior worker, I was put into what was called the electroplating shop. Oh, yeah and uh, they did all the polishing of fittings that went into the uh, carriages and stuff mm. like that. Mm. The polishing and uh, chroming of stuff. So then uh, you obviously showed a bit of talent so they moved you on. No, that was the junior worker was only for about three months right. uh, waiting for the start of my apprenticeship as a fitter and turner. Right, which you completed? Yes, I did that. Mm. Yep. So it was a five year apprenticeship yeah. in those days. Getting into teenage years uh, Briefly, what sort of things did you get up to in Midland? In, in Midland, uh, we lived very close to the Swan River. Mm. Much of our spare time was spent there, and also there was the swamp area that has since been covered into become sports grounds mm. now. We used to spend our spare time down there. 
Who did you knock around with then? In those days, uh, Daryl Lytton, his dad was a butcher's shop in town in Midland. Uh, he was one of my mates. Uh, and the Barndon boys, there was John Barndon, um, mm. and I think his brother played football for Swan Districts, one of the Barndon boys. Mm. Yeah. So uh, how did you become interested in baseball? Uh, it started at Governor Stirling, I think from memory, about second year I was there. Uh, one of the teachers, a guy named Kevin Byrne, for some reason had an interest in, in baseball and he got together a little baseball team and we, we played uh, a few games, I remember, on Wellington Square on right. a Saturday morning, I think it was. Uh, from memory, um, I can remember Baden Pratt, who's the son, a uh, family member of Neville Pratt. Mm. Um, he played for, I think, John Forrest High, I think it was, or some, uh, another so it was team. A, it was a it was school just a school It was only a couple of teams, though. There was only so a couple while of teams. You were, while you were at school? At school, yeah, in school. So we you played were, on a Saturday morning. My, my recollection of uh, those years, gloves were pretty ho- hard to come by, so mm, yeah. you, must, you must have been hard to get hold of gloves and old, gear. Scrapped some old gloves from somewhere, yeah. the sports gear. Yeah. What whatever. position were, were you playing then? Oh, we just played anywhere. It was just a. It was, there's no nothing real serious about it. Yeah. Uh, so and, and this bloke was the coach. Uh, he was involved, and I don't know whether maybe Des Ward had some connection to it too. Because I remember Des was a, a school teacher, and he may have been involved, but I can't be sure of mm, that. Mm. He was a well-known Swans player. So, so then uh, you, you progressed to Swan Districts baseball. Club. Yeah. Well, one of my mates was Kevin Eaton, and Kevin and I, I think, we joined around about the same time. At, uh, mm. over at Midland Oval. Mm. Uh, our first coach was uh, the senior coach. In those days, the senior coach coached the junior team as well, and that was Roy Gooch, mm. who everybody in baseball knows how mm. good a coach he was. Mm. And he used to coach us, and in fact, our games were played before the A-grade games. So he coached the juniors in the morning, right. and then he coached the senior team and played in the afternoon. This was at Midland Oval? That was when we played at Midland. That was mm. our home ground. And of course, this was the winter baseball days. It was. What was Midland Oval like in those days? Uh, the cricket pitch was there. I mm. remember balls getting stuck in the <coughs> cricket pitch and a few extra bases were run while they were trying to mm. find the ball in the mud. Mm. <laughs> and they had the cycling track there also. And the cycle yeah. track was there too, yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So any of the other kids that uh, in that under-16, it would have been under-16s that you first started playing? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, George Alford, I think, was one of the guys, one of our mates he played, George. Uh, Trevor Yardley, I think, was another. Mm. Possibly Max Lennigan. Was Kevin Eaton there? Kevin, yes, yeah. Kevin was involved. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, as a as a junior sportsman, who were your heroes? Uh, in, oh, the, in the Swans A grade boys. Yeah. <laughs> and that was a very uh, close knit community, Midland, in those days. Mm. And uh, you didn't shift around clubs in those days. No. And uh, so all of the the guys that. Uh, I remember Brian Crutchett and Roy Gooch, of course, Des Ward, Peter Cahoon, Kay Greenham. They were a little older than you. A little bit older than us, yes. Yep. Yep. Because they had quite a success uh, of premierships in a row. 53 from memory to 59, I think mm. it was seven in a row. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And then we won 62 and 63 again mm. also. So how many years did you play under 16s? I think... I would have gone through to 16s, the three years, I think it was juniors. Mm. Um, Then we played a short stint in B grade with one of the Gartrell boys, I remember, Bobby Gartrell, I think, was involved. And then three of us got invited up in 1961. Trevor Yardley, Max Lennigan and myself in 1961 got invited to join the A grade squad. Mm. And uh, from there we went on to play A grade. Mm. So... In those junior years, you, you uh, I'm interested in how you develop your skill as a pitcher. Well, uh, I, I played other sport. I played a lot of tennis in those days as well. But uh, baseball became an interest and uh, I practiced on, uh, on Pointon Avenue throwing at my old man's picket fence. I had a strike zone marked out on his picket fence and I stood out there and pitched the daylights out of it, <laughs> knocking <laughs> pickets off the fence. Right? <laughs> I got to strike with the old man. Yeah. My first game I played as pitcher was at Raphael Park against Vic Park. I remember yeah. that. Mm. Um, 
and as, this is as a junior, of course, uh, Raphael Park, and my memories of that, and Roy Gooch was the coach, of course, he said, oh, you're going to pitch today, and I said, well, OK, I'll give it a try. Mm. My memories of that was I was dead scared of hitting the batter. Oh, right. I don't know whether I lasted the game out or mm. not. but mm. Could <laughs> you throw a curveball at that time? Yeah, yeah, in a fashion, in a fashion, yeah, yeah in a fashion. Yeah. I do remember playing a junior grand final against West Perth, which Warren Wood, a good mate of mine even to today, uh, was playing for West Perth, and they uh, <coughs> they beat us in the junior grand final down at uh, the, the on the Esplanade. Oh yeah. And Woodsy got thrown in the river for winning the game. <laughs> he was <laughs> pitching for West Perth. <laughs> he was a good hitter too. Was and he? he was a good yeah good third yeah. baseman. He became too. So how many premierships did you win in those three years as under 16s? None that I recollect. Oh, right. None that I recollect as winning. And, and none through the, the, the lower grades of... of B grade, the... no, but A Reserve 1960, we won A Reserve Grand Final. Mm. That was actually played out on... I remember playing the Grand Final, we played it out at Lake Munga, of all places. Oh, yeah. But it was a reserve... Out in Wembley. And I can remember playing against one of the players that's in the Hall of Fame, Jim Dore, was mm. near the end of his career. Mm. He was playing A Reserve. I do mm. remember that. So I think it would have been South Perth we played. Yeah. yeah. How did you get around uh, to to the game? Like as in, in those junior days and A and Reserve prior to getting a licence? Mum and Dad. Mum and Dad. Mum and Dad. Mm. And my mum and Dad mm. travelled. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mum... Uh, Scored, didn't she? She did this. Did some scoring. She became a scorer. Yeah, yeah. that's right. For many years. For many years. Mm-hmm. So um, they obviously spotted this talent coming through, and you were invited into the the A grade squad. What did that involve? Uh, it involved sharing duties with uh, the pitchers. I, I did get to pitch in a few games in '61. Uh, Kay Greenham was the gun at the time. Mm. Kay, and mm. Kay and Brian Crutchett, of course. Mm. Tony Mattelgen was there. Mm. Tony. So, and I played a bit of shortstop as well. Right. So, and what was your preferred position uh, when you were sort of in those formative years? Oh, I always wanted to pitch. You always wanted to pitch. I always yeah. reckon the pitcher had control yeah. of the game. <laughs> well, you did pretty well at that. I can tell you. <laughs> we got by. Yeah. We got by. So but we play our outfield as well. They were. They were Roy Gooch was a coach who moved his players around a fair bit. Mm. He didn't s- stick to a set field. He got mm. to play other positions. What sort of bloke was he to play under Roy, Roy Gooch? Roy. Yeah. Uh, I found him very good, mm. very good. Uh, but if you, you stepped out of line and didn't do as you asked, mm. my, my f- other memories of him, he said, you never stood there and took a third strike. You had oh, to get right. bat on ball. Yeah, right. And he always hurry, encouraged you to hit behind the runner with the runner on first. Oh, yeah. I can remember yeah. that of him. Yeah. Uh, but he had some darn good players around him. The, you know, Mattel, Jan, Greenham, Kay played yeah. state when he was yeah. 17 or something. Yeah. So were, you, were you playing cricket at all? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we played cricket as well. Until oh, because it was summer. It was... A, it was Summer uh, cricket. Summer was cricket until, what, 65, 1965? Mm. Yeah, mm. we all played cricket. I played only played second grade. I never played A grade. Mm. Cause I know some of the boys played A grade. But mm. I only played uh, second grade with uh, Tony Mann's brother, Dorham, Dorham Mann. Mm. Mm. Yep. So uh, did you ever get to play the night games at the Wacker? Yes. Can you did. give us yeah. a picture of what it was like playing under lights? The lights there were very substandard. Very substandard. Mm. <laughs> in fact, if you were playing the outfield, you could easily lose the ball in mm. those lights and you yeah. waited till it hit the ground and then went <laughs> we got it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we had a few other guys come in to play night ball, like Kevin Gartrell. He was a very good player, yeah. Kevin. And I think he went to South Australia and played in the night series for a oh, WA team. Over there. Well, he was a state cricketer, A grade and mm. a state cricketer yep. also. Keith Slater was another one who played yeah. uh, night ball. Yeah. Yeah. Was that uh, as Swan Districts? Or Swan's was Angels. We were called the Swan's Angels. Because it was a separate competition. Wasn't that a summer competition? Yeah, it was just a night series played at the Wacker. Mm. All games were at the Wacker. Although Drake Brockman was the uh, on the microphone. He, oh, up on the, st- up on the yeah. halfway up the they pole, used to get the very, light pole. They used to get very good uh, crowds there. They used to get mm. four or 5,000 to the mm. night pole. And do you remember the bloke that used to sit behind... Uh, the, the batter's box at the Wacker with the megaphone. Mr Roy Gooch Senior, mm. of course, yeah. yeah. He was the 
He was the de- <laughs> the enemy of all the opposition. Yeah, they hated him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, uh, so Can you him. can you recollect any of the characters of those days? Uh, the opposition to Roy Gooch Senior was a guy named I think his name was Ed Hal- Hulse. Ed Hulse. He was the Perth man. He oh, was yeah. the the Roy Gooch sen- Senior of the Perth side. And they used to sit next to one another. Oh no, they didn't sit next to each other. I don't think. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. And what about the players? Like the. Um, the characters of the players. Oh and yeah, that, that's that Andy McPherson for Perth. And oh yes, I remember Paul Rigby doing a, a cartoon on the back of the Daily News after Paul um, Bandy McPherson had thumped Peter Coon at second base. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so um, in the in the winter comp, which was the main comp in those days. Yep. Well, just uh, just going back to that whack of competition, was that just a round robin? So you played each other twice. And was there a final series? Yeah, there was a grand final for it. And mm. Did know, Swans know, ever win that? Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. Mm. we we weren't we weren't a mixed side. Some of the other teams uh, had players from other clubs come into their team for their. Right. But Swans with the Swans Angels were purely Swans guys. There was no other. There was no outsiders came in. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it was a pity that night baseball stopped because, yep. as you alluded to earlier, it was quite popular and the numbers were really good. Mm. Yeah. I can't be certain as what years it ran, but it started in the ni- early 1950s, I believe. Mm. So you were you were pitching for Swans Angels? In those Not days. every game? Not every game, no. Yeah. Kevin Gartrell, I think, he threw a grand final win for us. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, we shared the... Pitch. When you did pitch, did you pitch a full game, or would Gucci sort of... Just depend on how you were going. Generally, you, you stayed in there. If you, you were play, if you were going all right and the team was going all right, you stayed in. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I can remember playing a game at Leaderville Oval in the be in the 1960s Swans. I don't know whether you were involved in it, Don, but we played 19 innings at Leaderville Oval against West Perth. No. And both myself and Brian Wren, we both threw the the distance 19 innings. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we can come to that because you did a similar thing in Claxton Shield. Oh, yeah. In in, uh, in 63. Yeah. But. Uh, just coming up through those formative years, um, you would have been gaining confidence in school, and you you weren't a bad bat either. Yeah, well, we all had to bat. Yeah, there was no uh, no DHs in those days. No, and we could all bat. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the uh, yeah yeah from the from the night competition, we go back to the winter competition. Um, what other grounds? Did you and what other teams were in the competition at that stage? Uh, well, there was Perth, of course. They were pretty much Perth and Swans were the, the two gun sides in those mm. days. Where was what was their home ground? Um, Perth, I think, might have been might have been Ingwood Oval. I'm not mm. sure. Mm. Couldn't be certain on that. Because Langley Park was used quite. Langley Park got used a fair bit too. I think mm. yes. Um, other teams were East Perth, which became the Eagles. There was uh, Fremantle team, Fremantle, Nedlands, mm. South Perth, Vic Park. Mm. Um, Rodney Byrne would have been playing with you at Swans. He would have been about the same age. Rod's a little bit was a little bit older. He came from Bellevue. Yeah. He played for Bellevue, and they only had a B grade side. And he came somewhere in the late nineteen fifties, I believe, about nineteen fifty eight, fifty nine. Right. He came to Swans, and of course, we all know what. Rod was like big fella, but by God, he was fast and he could mm. bat. He could whack a ball. Yeah, and um, did he pitch much in those days when he? A first little bit, came? a little. Yeah, not a lot though. He yeah. played a bit of third base and yeah. Uh, yeah. threw a few over the top, but uh, yeah, no, no, yes. he was good to play with. Uh, he I was think he still holds the base running record for the full round of the bases. Yeah, I, they used I to have a competition. Does. I think. Yes, and, they uh, did. Yeah. yeah, he was quick. Very good. Um, so we go to um, a point where you're sort of becoming more recognised in, in the game and state selection, uh, can you describe to us how you know you come to get selected in the state side and what the feeling was and where you went? Uh, in six, 62 and 63, which is the two that I played in early, uh, they always had two squads, one was called the Probables and one was called the Possibles. Oh, yeah. And they formed two squads that 
sort of trained and played uh, scratch games against each other. Mm. And through that, they then selected the, uh, the state side. Who was the coach at 62? 62 would have been Merv Muggleton, oh, yeah. as he was in 63. He was an East Fremantle man. He was a Fremantle boy. Fremantle. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Mm. We used to train down on uh, the ozone ozone area. Right. Which I see they've got a lake there now. Yes, that's right. <laughs> the other fella, one of the other fellas that came down a bit later to train with us was Dennis Lilly. He used to come down and because I think he was a mate a mate of Dale Hughes. Oh, is that right? Dale would confirm that one way or the other. But yeah, Dale did play cricket, I think. Mm. But um, so 62, go. your first selection, uh, how did you get to here that you were, you were selected? How did I get to here? That's a good question. I don't remem- remember exactly. It was exactly just named right. in the paper, was it? Yeah, it would have been probably. named in the paper, probably, mm. yeah. yeah. It was did, did baseball get uh, good press in those days, yes. like the Gucci era? And because of Don Callanan. Don yeah, Callanan was yeah. the newspaper. He worked in the newspapers, and uh, we were all very lucky that uh, we were Don very Callanan lucky that Don was around because uh, even f- from a new museum ex- perspective, uh, the oh yeah, the the newspaper articles, articles. that he did, yes. yeah, he no, was, he was very good for the baseball, oh, very good, yes, from a publicity point of view, yes. Mm. So where was the sixty sixty two? Uh, sorry, this uh, the first year you represented the state. Where did you? Where was that carnival, as they called it? That was at East Perth Oval. Perth Oval, which is now what NIB Stadium. Oh. Yeah, East Perth Oval. What were the What were the ground conditions like there? They were okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we were, we did, I don't rem- remember it being difficult. Uh, they just had a big back net and home run fence. I don't remember them having a back net. Mm. They did have no home run fence. No home run fence. No. Oh. No. You had to run it out. Yeah, right. So uh, you remember how how you went in that series, you personally and and the team? We went very close to winning the series, but we didn't. I think the Vicks the Vicks might have won it, uh, but we went very close to winning it. Yeah. Mm. My main memory was the first time I went to bat, home run with base and loaded. <laughs> that was it. That was it. First oh, time you, to bat. And you ran it out. Yep. Where did it go to? Over to the other side of the ground because it was home run fence. <laughs> no home run. <laughs> no, no fence. home run. But yeah. what was it? A grounder or, or it went in the air? No, it went in the air. And I remember the guy who was pitching to a South Australia a guy named Don Rice. Oh, yeah. Don Rice was the pitcher. So, um, what direction was it? Left or centre or centre field? I think it went. Oh, it was straight through. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that would have been. Um, we were a bit quick, quicker in those days too, running. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bases loaded. Wow. Yeah. And and. You ultimately won that game? I believe we did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah, so you say you you kind of sort of came pretty close to winning, but not quite. The series. The, yeah. the series, sorry, yeah. 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 Was there much of a social atmosphere involved with the carnivals in those days? Uh, like meeting other players, other teams and stuff? What, m- um, mixing with the other teams? Yeah, mixing with the other teams. I don't remember mixing much with the other teams, no, no, no not no. in those days. No. So players from that 62 team that you you recall were sort of uh, standouts? Well, Tony Madeleine and we had good, represent- uh, good representation from Swans. Mm. Rod Byrne was there, of course. Mm. Uh, Howard Walker, who unfortunately is not with us anymore. Mm. Peter Cahoon uh, was in the team. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but Kay Greenham wasn't in that team. But uh, mm. uh, he would have. Ordered, I think he was doing stu- I think studying. He was studying for being mm. a doctor, and I mm. think that was his, one of his reasons for not uh, participating. Mm. Mm. Um, the other guys we had as pitchers were John Kelly, I remember, mm. of course, Tony, uh, Norm Macy Jr. was mm. in that team. What time of year was it, Mel? <sighs> yeah. Would have been winter time. It was would win winter time, yep. Yeah, anyhow. I don't recall exactly. Yeah, that's was, okay. That's what he had a break. Yeah, but yeah. we didn't have any problems there mm. with uh, with the ground surfaces and mm. so forth in mm. Queensland. So uh, coming back to Swans, uh, Swans won the premiership that year. Sixty two, yeah. And then again in sixty three, which yeah. was the second year you were selected in the state team. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what were you specifically selected for? Uh, Utility or no pitch, pitcher as a pitcher, yeah. right? Yeah. Who was your catcher uh, in that series? 63 mm. it was Ron Thornton, 
and Dale Hughes was the, was the other one. Oh, right. Because um, Ronnie, I'm not sure what game it was, but it was early in the series and it was played on the Gabba in Brisbane. Uh, early in the series, uh, Ron Thornton got a broken arm mm. by a guy in a batter's box, chopped down on him, mm. and broke his arm. Oh. Well, this arm, I think it was. Who was the backup catcher then? Dale. Dale Hughes. Oh, Dale, of Dale, course. Yeah. Dale was our backup. Dale was yeah. younger then. And after that, I don't know who would have caught because yeah. we didn't have any more yeah. than two. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, the, the Gabba would have been a pretty primitive sort of type of ground in those days. It was a, I've, got a, I've got a photograph of it at home that shows the outer of the Gabba and it was just grass banks, grassy yeah, banks, actually, no grandstands. Yeah, because they had no that famous stands. cricket game there in 61, I mm, think it was, so this right. is 63. Mm, mm. And very uh, hard ground, the surface was very hard. Oh, yeah. I remember that. No home run fence again? No home run fence, no, no, no. Mm. Yeah. There was a cricket pitch in the middle, but the cricket pitch was rock hard because I played right field in one game, and I remember taking all the skin off my arms trying to catch a ball. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this was the year that uh, you you had that extended eighteen innings game. That's can you, right. Can you work us through that? Uh, Who was just, that against? Just a long game it was against New South Wales, mm. um, and it was they stalled the game because of light. In the end, we ran out of light. So what was the score then? Was it one all? It was level, I think it was one all or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Pretty tight. It was tight, yeah, it was a tight yeah. game. Yeah. 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 So um, at the end of the series, you were named in the Australian team? Yeah, that's right, 63. What sort of recognition or, or sort of, uh, you didn't go away? This time you got a jacket from memory mm. with a pocket on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah, that was uh, that would have been quite an honour then. Oh yeah. Were there many other Western Australians selected in that? Do you remember from that series? I think I think Dale Hughes might have done. Mm. Might have been Dale. Anyhow, I'm not sure of the others. So y your biggest weapon was your curveball, you reckon? Off speed, yeah. Off, off speed, speed curveball. Off ball. speed, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, my recollection was that ball used to come around third base. <laughs> <laughs> it was that much of a loop well, you, when I first... You remember you and I had a bit of a signal system, didn't we? We used to relay the curve ball sign to the outfield. Yeah, field that's right. Through I'd, shortstop. Yeah, I'd be out in the foul territory catching you, you, were, you moved closer to the foul line. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, they were... Well, I came into um, A grade, I think, about 66. Yeah. So okay. we were back here in 63... So you continued on playing club ball, club ball, but yeah. uh, you didn't go for state selection for a number of years. No, two reasons: uh, got married in '64, and working in the railways uh, wasn't easy to get time off. Mm. You, you had to take unpaid leave. You couldn't. You wouldn't be get paid for it. You um, couldn't take annual leave. Well, you couldn't. You could take leave, but be unpaid. You, you didn't get paid for your leave. Uh, you, know, you couldn't take it as as uh, annual leave. Oh, yeah, is that right? Yeah, even even and, then. Yeah, and we were uh, we were trying to save hard for a for a house ourselves. Mm. Uh, married, early married. Where did you live when you? This was in Midland. We lived Still out. Living in Midland? We lived at a place called Silver City, which you would know very well, yeah. Wexcombe. Yeah. Which now became has now become Stratton. Stratton. Yeah. yeah. We were there for eighteen months. Mm, they were good years. One of the Nissan huts out there, yeah. Yeah. yeah they were good years. Yeah, yeah. They were good years. Yeah. yeah. There was a few other guys out there. One of our baseballers, Dave Hillman, Swans player, mm -hmm. played A grade in later mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. David Catcher. He was out there, catcher, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, at this point, yeah, I started playing um, juniors in uh, 62, but Roy Gooch had gone. I think Gucci must have. Richard been. retired from coaching and playing, I think, around about 62. Yeah, I think he yeah. retired from about there. Yeah, because Rodney Byrne was my first. Tony Mattelgen coached us, I think, to the grand final in '63. I think. Oh, that was—is that the one at '63? Uh, Lathlane. Do you remember? Doesn't matter. No, I don't know for sure, mate. So, so '63 was the last premiership. Yep. Uh, so you're working through those, uh, they're pretty barren years for Swans. Hmm. Uh, well, a lot of guys to... retired, so you've yeah. you got guys yeah. like Brian Crutchett, uh, Peter Cahoon. Yeah, I never played Kay, with any of them. Kay stopped because of his studies <laughs> for doctoring. Um, Howard Walker was another one. 
they all retired around about the same mm. time. Yeah, well, the guys that I remember coming into A grade playing in sort of in 64, area. 65, yeah, around it was Ronnie Brown, Ray Ron Zilko. Brown, Ray Zilko. Yeah, yeah. Kevin Eaton was Kevin, a catcher. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Brian Hodder, I think, might have been. Brian. Third yeah, infield, third base, maybe. Charlie was in the state uh, side Charlie, in 63. Charlie, of course, first base. He came yeah. to Brisbane in 63, Charlie, as a first baseman. Yeah, right. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, he was an exceptional first baseman, mm. Charlie. Yep. So, yeah, the, the years through to, um, you know... 69, 70 was... 69, 70, that... That um, was the next time. The life. memorable grand final uh, in, in 69. Played down at Floriot. Played at Floriot. Can you can you run us through that story? <laughs> you were heavily involved in this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what innings it was, mate, but it was late yeah. in the game. Yeah. And uh, you were running between second and third, I believe. Mm. Um, exactly how it came about, but the ball was thrown across to Eric Robinson, the third mm. baseman at the time, at for Perth, and he blocked you off the base badly without the ball. Well, they say that. I don't have well, any recollection. That's how it came about. Yeah. He blocked you off the base, and I don't know what whether you hit, hit your head hit his knee or what yeah. it hit, but but I stopped. You stopped in a big hurry, and mm -hmm. we couldn't uh, couldn't even do anything about getting your yeah. hand on the base, and he just just tagged you, and you were given. Well, out. it was a pass ball. The ball went through. That's right. And uh, yeah. I, I remember going around second base just briefly, yes. and I knew Peter Solomon was on first base. That's right, Peter Solomon. And I knew he didn't have an arm. That's right. So I thought, I'll walk through. Yes. But I went head first like an idiot. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, so anyhow, uh, we get to the end of that game. It was a pretty tight game. It was a tight game. Well, and uh, won all. if you could just run us through the last, say, three or four balls of that game. I'll run you through the last two, I'll do it, mate. <laughs> 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 yeah. We, we won't mention the umpire's name here, but <laughs> I don't think we should mention his name. But uh, Lindsay, Moyle, Lindsay Moyle was on base. I think he was on first for some reason. Mm. And his brother Daryl came to bat. We had uh, two strikes on Daryl. And I threw what I reckon was a strike, was called a ball. Who was your catcher? Um, Davey Horn. I think it would have to been mm. Dave. Mm. It would have been have to been Davey. Mm. Um, and we, we were, I was ready to walk off the mound because that was... I think we were in front at the time. We were in front 1-0 yeah. at the time with Lindsay on first oh base. And anyway, Daryl Daryl hit the next ball over the over the fence, and yeah. that was two one to Perth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still talked about today that uh, that Johnny, strike. Johnny Claxton was the uh, coach, wasn't he? That's correct. John yeah. Claxton was coaching us. Johnny, I it's still amazing, see Johnny uh, to this day. Yeah, that that team um, was really sort of scratched together. It was wasn't a team of champions. Well, that, that one of the interesting Swans one team. of the interesting things I recorded from that year, that particular year. We had the most, the least runs scored for us in the season, mm. the least runs scored for, and the least runs against. Well, there you go. So we had a damn good defence. Defence. We had a good defence. Yeah, we just didn't that. have the batting. The batting power. Yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. yeah. But we still got to the grand final. Yeah. Which was good. Well, that was one of my yeah. um, everlasting frustrations playing baseball was my consistency with the bat. Yeah. But anyhow, no, uh, I, quite a few. Quite a few blokes sort of felt that yeah. same thing. So, 69, uh, yeah, that was the uh, Floriot Park game. Um, you you left Swans in, what, 1970? 70, 71. How did that come about? Uh, came about for two reasons. Um, I'd changed jobs. I wasn't working with the railways then. I'd, from the railways, I'd moved from railways to Chamberlain Tractors in uh, in the drawing office at Chamberlain's in Welshpool. But in 7071, I moved to another job in uh, which was based in Leadable, a uh, company called George Moss. And working in Leadable, we were living in Morley, and for some reason or other, I think it was probably through my mother had something to do with it, but. <laughs> Uh, a guy named Ron Wynn, who was president of West yeah. Perth at the time, he uh, he approached me to because Ron Thornton had been shifted with his job, mm. his work. He was working with an oil company from memory. Uh, he got shipped to, shipped to the Pilbara with his job, mm. and they'd won the 
premiership that year before, mm-hmm. uh, which was a fatal mistake on my half because mm. <laughs> to go and coach a team that had just won a premiership. <laughs> yeah, right. But I got asked to go and coach. Um, I've still got the paperwork involved in that because uh, the the fee for coaching was $150. Yeah, right. 1970. Yeah, with a bonus if we got into the finals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 71. So you went there as a coach? I went there as a coach, yeah. Mm. yeah. But it, it was a challenge? It was a bit of a challenge, yeah, yeah. But for me it was uh, twofold because I worked in not too far from West Perth Oval as mm-hmm. it was, was right you know West West Perth so uh, where the square West Perth would yeah, base Lidl, then, Lidl, Lidl, Lidl Oval that was where they based mm. so it was right near just up the road from work yeah. for me yeah. and that was one of the main reasons uh, that I went it wasn't mm. for the money and the, the money mm. covered petrol money and yeah it covered yeah the of course petrol. But one hundred and fifty dollars in in seventy one was it was a fair yeah. bit. It was oh, a fair bit. definitely, yeah. Yeah. And and uh, did you enjoy coaching? Yeah, I did. I How many years it. did you do that? Uh, probably about five years. Oh right. About five, and then Woodsy took over, Warren Wood. Yeah. Uh, but again, we had we didn't have the strength in players batting wise. Yeah. That was our biggest weakness there. And I'd, I'd eased out of starting to do the pitching. I encouraged the young guys like Steve Langdon and Murray Westfall came oh, yeah, in to do yeah, the pitching yeah, yeah. for West Perth in those days, yeah. which became West Stirling, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Swans was all my, always my favourite club, always has been. Oh, yeah, but uh, I can remember always wondering, what's he leaving for? Because yeah, yeah. there was quite a few blokes left Swans when I was there. Um, we got Bobby Harris after... That's right. Bob After came. you left, yeah, Bob came. Right, yeah. He was our main pitcher because yeah. in those <laughs> days we only had one game of a Sunday. And like when I was playing with you, you pitched every Sunday, every game, every game, every yeah. game. Except I, yeah. I didn't pitch all of the game down at Nedlands. Mick, Michael White, remember yeah. Mike? Mick yeah. White. Mm. We we started with Mick. And um, he he lost it. He just lost control and whatever. Yeah. And I finished the game for him. Yeah, right. <clears throat> but that was the way it was. You just pitched every game. Yeah. yeah. Talk, was that Netherlands? Did you say down at Netherlands? It yeah. was that Mick White had a. That was on the foreshore there. Down at the foreshore. Yeah. 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 You remember the ball running into the river? Oh yeah, that happened occasionally. Yeah. I got wet socks and wet feet dragging <laughs> Ray Cook's home runs Ray out Cook. of there because <laughs> they were all ground hits. Yes. There was no, no fencing. No in those fence. Days, no. no fences. No. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can remember Dale playing then. Mm. Ernie Muse was around as a coach mm-hmm. in those days. Mm. Yep. Uh, Ernie Muse was yeah the first coach that I had in '68. Well, when we went to Sydney with the Claxton Shield, I came back to Claxton Shield in '70 '71. Uh, Ernie was the coach of that team. I, where did you go in '70 '71? New South Wales, Oriel Park in Auburn. Right. Oriel Park. Was that in the winter time or summer time? That was winter ball because New South Wales hadn't gone to summer at that stage, 1970. Oh. What was the so ground the, like? Ground was fine until it rained. Yeah. And uh, I remember we played one game uh, you could only just see the bases. The rest of it was water. Amazing. And they still kept going, played yeah. the game. Were they wooden bats or aluminium in those days? Uh, wooden bats, still as wooden. I recall. I think they were still wooden. Yeah. On, on wooden bats, uh, if I could sort of just pause at uh, in those years where we're now, but uh, your dad had a major part to play in repairing bats for pretty much everybody. Can you describe what he did with the bats or how they got broken and, and that process? Well, there was a, one or two guys, and I shouldn't mention their names, but... One you can mention them here. Yeah. One particular guy, guy I remember, he broke about half a dozen bats in one night at training, Ian White. Yeah. Ian became an umpire, of course. Yeah, of course. Uh, but my dad, because money was tight in those days, of course, mm. as it was for baseball clubs, there was no, uh, no beneficiaries there that uh, maintained your finances for you. Um, so dad would take the broken bat, if it was recoverable, just mm. cracked or whatever, mm. and he bound them with a, uh, a twine. Mm. And how he did it was he used to peg a nail in his fence and he'd unroll the, the twine and he'd wind them on by hand right. and bound, bound bats. And there's one here in this museum today that was bound by him. Were they, did he put glue on them to, to hold yes, them Yes, there was, there was glue put in onto them uh, a little after he'd bound them, mm. once he'd bound them. Mm. Yep. 
Yeah. Uh, and they seem to survive and go back into use. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I don't know how many bats he bound, but he bound an awful lot. Oh, he did. Yeah. Well, he, when he, he did it for Swans, and then yes. he would have done it for... He did it for West Perth. West, West Perth. West Sterling, yeah. When did West Perth change to West Sterling, can you recall? I think we only had... <coughs> I think when I, when I went there as coach, I only remember us ever being there at the most for one season. Hmm. And uh, for whatever reason, the football club there didn't want us there. We, for some reason, they got rid of us from off the ground. Hmm. Um, and I think we went to Alderbury Reserve from there. Hmm. And then Where was that? Alderbury was down at Lake Munger. Oh, yeah, okay. Down, not Lake Munger, or, um, down by um, the stadium, the old stadium, the um, game stadium. Oh, yeah, Floriot Way. Floriot, yeah, oh, down yeah. there, Alderbury oh, yeah. Reserve. So when did you go to uh, Millington Reserve? Uh, Millington? Whew. I don't know what year we went there. but You I were playing there, weren't you? Yeah, we were still yeah. playing there. Um, that would have been in the mid-70s, I yeah. think. Yeah, I, I can remember mid playing uh, Millington in yeah, <coughs> 75. Mm -hmm. And they were still playing there in 86, so I'm not yeah. sure where they play now. Yeah, well, that, they, their club seems to have folded mm. in recent times. So Although they're uh, still playing lower grade baseball but not yeah. that great. So uh, your success rate as a coach, how would you rate that? Just average, yeah. nothing fantastic. Did you, did you get into the four? Did you make Oh finals? yeah, yeah. we made finals. Uh, the first year I was there we got right through to sem um, second semi I think. Oh right? okay. Yeah. Yeah. Put in the prelim, I think we got through yeah. the prelim. So we who took over coaching. coaching from you? From me I think uh, well, I think you said Warren Wood, didn't you? Warren Wood was involved in in one of the years. Um, Steve Oxbrow came from me from Fremantle oh, at yeah. one stage. Yeah. And, um, memory's not so good. Yeah, no, Sorry, that's okay. So we move into seventy two, seventy three. It was actually about January seventy three. Seventy three. Well, there's a Claxton Shield series in Perth. Yeah, that was played at Subiaco Oval. Yeah, so you Subiaco. nominated for that. Yeah. And but I was playing second base by then. Yeah, I can recall that, mm. and um, so you had a good series that series. Yeah, 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 with with bat and and the glove. Yeah, who was your shortstop for for double plays? Uh, Dave Kempton. Oh yeah, Kempo was. Well, he was he was a West Sterling boy. Yeah, he came to yeah. West Sterling. Mm. Yeah, Dave Kempton. Yep. Yeah, he was pretty nifty, uh, nifty on yeah. his feet and yep. glove. Yep. So you uh, get selected in the Australian team. That must have been. Mm. Uh, yeah. A thrill. It was. It was when, when was that announced? Do you remember? At the closing ceremony, I suppose. I think so. I think so, Don. I, I couldn't be certain. Mm. On Were that. you surprised? Yeah, a little bit. A little yeah. surprised. But mm. I'd, I'd had a good series. And, mm. uh, there was two other guys from WA were in the in the team. Ray Michelle. Mm. That was one of his early years. He was only a young lad. Mm. Ray Michelle. He was a, he was a gun. Ray. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Steve Oxbrow was the other. Oh yeah, there, there was the three of us, and uh, yeah, they were both pitchers. We didn't we us. didn't go to train with this, the Australian team. We because uh, <coughs> I was the older one of the three. I was just given instructions from uh, the Eastern States coach uh, to uh, to train the guys over here to keep them fit for the series in Manila. We oh, went to the right. Philippines because you were going out of season. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. and. Ray, as I say, Ray was only a, only a young lad in those days. Mm. One of my memories of Ray uh, and was when we were boarding the plane. We we actually uh, the plane had a, a ramp that went up in under the tail. Oh yeah. <laughs> we were we we're, we're, were all last on the plane, and one of the last one was Ray Michelle, mm. and got in, got into the seats and sat down. Blah blah blah. And the hostess who was at the bottom of the stairs. Walked up the stairs and with a passport in her hand. Oh, is that right? It was Ray Michelle's. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, in that series in Perth. We flew to Sydney to go to leave from Sydney as a team. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, so, the three of you flew over there. Yeah. Yeah, but just getting back to that Claxton Shield series in Perth, do um, you remember any of the, the guns that, that Western Australia had or any. Mm, Donnie Knapp. Don Knapp. Yeah. yeah. 
Nappy had only he arrived in '72 from from memory. Yep. He won the Helms Award. Yeah, in, Donnie uh, Nap, Bob Ossie was in there as well. Mm. I remember Don. He had a he sprung his thumb on his catching hand, and uh, I've got a photo somewhere at home of uh, Doc Greenham pumping a painkiller into oh, his thumb with right? a needle. Is that right? <laughs> and he's got an awful look on his face. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. must have hurt. <laughs> Do you recall that series, uh, the Coca-Cola theme that they kept playing over the loudspeaker? <laughs> <laughs> Just to drive us mad. Oh, yeah. 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 But, I mean, they had to have some sponsorship. Because yeah. they had a, a Coke machine, I think, on the bench. Well, we didn't... I, I used to give Glenn Watson a couple of bob to go and get a can of something for me and he mentions that in his uh, oh, I saw that. in the Hall of Fame uh, biography. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> and, and the coach in that series 72? Uh, uh, the 73 series. 73 coach. Is that Rodney? It would have been Rod. Yeah, it would have been Rodney. I'm sure it was Rod. Yeah. 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 So uh, he eventually was selected uh, to coach uh, in an Australian capacity, also at some stage. Mm, not well, in wasn't my it, time. Wasn't it? Wasn't in that one. Not so, in my time. Um, so 70, 73 was your last Claxton Shield. Yep. yep. Now uh, we get on the plane to Manila, and you and you hook up with all these guys in Sydney. But what are the names that you hooked up with over there? Uh, well, the coach was a guy named David Went. Uh, Kevin Greatrex, Greatrex was first base from memory. Larry Home, who came to WA eventually. Yeah. Larry was there. Um, who else was there? Kevin Greatrix, Larry Home. Dave Mundy. David Mundy. Yeah. And that Nick Curing. Nick Curing was, the, he and I were the second base players. Yeah. Nick Curing from South Australia. David Mundy, of course. South Australia was a shortstop. And the, and the outfield, Paul Russell would have been an outfielder. Russell was involved, yeah. Yep. Yeah. My memories of that series was... Uh, one of uh, when we first went to the ground that we played on, they had a home run fence which was concrete. It was a concreted fence, mm. but it had the names of all the players who'd hit home runs on that fence. Oh, right. And the first name that stuck out to me was uh, the famous one, the the Bambino, the American Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth. Is yeah. that right? He had his name on the. This home was run in fence. Manila, was it? In Manila, right? Yeah. 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 You remember the name of that stadium? Uh, Rizal, I think it was called the Rizal Stadium. I wonder if it's still there. Don't know. Good question. Mm. Because Australia <coughs> played quite a few series up in Manila from. from well, I think '73 was the first year of uh, President Marcos's reign. Oh, okay. Because we got taken to the palace to meet him. Oh, yeah. Um, and in those days, the army was uh, heavily in charge of every part of the city. They mm. had. Uh, mm guards on traffic lights and everything. Mm. I can remember the car I was in, traffic light, the guy broke a rule and one of the, the guards poked his rifle through the door do at the driver. I thought he was going to shoot him. Oh, is that right? <laughs> so it was a pretty scary place to be in. It was the, a scary in, place. In you, didn't, uh, you didn't go out on your own oh, okay. um, at all and there was a curfew, a 10 o'clock curfew anyway. Mm. How many games did you play in that <coughs> Did you play and how many games did the team play? Good question on the number of games the team played, but I only played. I played very little in that series. Yeah. Uh, I didn't uh, didn't get on the ballpark very often. You didn't get much of a hit. No. no. Yeah. 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 But that that's the way it was. Yeah. So there would have been a squad of about seventeen, I suppose. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was a pretty big. So squad. you've got you've got pretty <coughs> fond memories of that trip. One of the lasting memories is the hotel we were staying in burnt down while we were there. Oh, right. They had a fire in the in the hotel and we all said afterwards it needed burning down anyway <laughs> <laughs> but in that in that in that year 1973 uh, I can remember at the hotel we were before it burnt down they had a, a, a balcony up on the top of the hotel mm. and we stood up on the balcony one night and watched a block of the city just burn down a, a, right. a shanty area of the city just burnt to the ground another life another life another yeah. way of yeah. life in that series, uh, you had your WA teammates. How did they perform? Oxbrow and uh, Ray did Ray. okay, I think. Ray and Steve, they did okay because they were in as pitchers. They were through, yeah. Uh, but the, the Japs and the Koreans were very good sides. Mm. Yeah, very good. So the Australia, there was Australia, yeah. Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Taiwan, China. I think China were involved. Oh, okay, I think so. 
So did you, you don't remember whether you played them twice or it was just once each? How long had you been away? It was a good couple of weeks. So mm. I think it would have been a round robin series. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So so coming back, uh, you settled back into club ball, just club, and, club and you club weren't ball. you weren't coaching then. Yeah, I, was, I think I was still coaching in that in that uh, just after that for uh, a couple uh, of years. Seventy three. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And and still at uh, leadable oval. No, that was that was that. We, uh, we were out of leadable the first oh, year. Oh, Flory place. Out, but, um, we were at Alderbury Reserve, and then. Uh, out to Millington. Millington, Millington yeah. 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 It was, we were playing at Millington in uh, in 73. Mm. So we are only briefly at Alderbury, one yeah. season, I think. Yeah. And the stalwarts at uh, West Erling, as you were known, mm. then. The Langdon family. Yeah. The Barracks, Jan and Bob Barrack. Yeah. Gavin, of course. Gavin played Claxton Shield, I yeah. think, eventually. Yeah. yeah Langdon, put... Steve Langdon did also. Yeah. Steve coached West Stirling to uh, a premiership too, right. I remember that. Yeah. What was your last year, competitive year of playing? The last year I played would have been 79, 80. Oh, right. Yep. Yeah. 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 I, I finished up at the same time. Around that time? Yeah, yep. yeah, that's yep. right. Yep. So, um, yeah, you were still pitching up to that point? No, or were you giving no, it to the young no, blokes? No, I, I left it to the young guys. And you were playing second base? Yeah. 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 And what... Was was Warren still playing with you then? John Farrant was there, wasn't he? Johnny Farrant retired fairly early. He was one of the early ones out. He yeah. didn't stay long. Des Philby, of course. Des, I think he he played for another year or two when I first went there. Yeah, I, I do recall uh, when I first went away in '68 to Brisbane. Yeah. Um, Warren and uh, Johnny Warren was shortstop, yes. and Johnny Farrant was second base. Yeah. And they had a record number of double plays. Did they? Yeah, they were a really good combination. Yeah, yeah. Really good combination. Mm. So, uh, did you w once you once you finished, uh, it was an easy decision to finish playing baseball. Yeah, pretty much. Because yeah. I was, I was interested. I'm not a good spectator. No. I didn't go and watch games. No. <laughs> and uh, a fellow named Wally Piper was uh, one of the supporters at West Sterling. He was a member of at the golf club at Mount Lawley and he said why don't you come and play golf so mm. I did that yeah so looking back on on those 20 odd years uh, what would be your fondest memory of uh, an era or incident that might have occurred fondest memory fondest memories okay fondest memories would have been uh, Playing my first A grade game, and I don't remember exactly what I did, but yeah. that was that was fun. Yeah. Um, and 1963, and I enjoy, enjoy even though we lost the grand final, I enjoyed 69, 70. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Oh, year. that that year, yeah. Yeah, but all of the years at Swans were good years, so I enjoyed yeah. them. We had uh, we had a, we had a good we rapport had a good amongst ourselves. Yeah, that was good yep. fun. Well, we, we've come to the end of the our baseball story, I think, Mel. If, <laughs> if you've got anything more you'd like to add, but uh, it's been really great being able to have this chat and and have it on record. And uh, I wish you all the best yeah. in the future. Thanks coming, very much. Coming to the museum, the baseball museum, has been an, 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 an enlightening experience and brings back lots of memories. Yeah, I guess it would. Lots of memories, yeah. yeah. Well, As it would to you too, mate. You're doing a great job here. Uh, no, I'm, I'm only a part-timer. There's, uh, there's Yeah, a, but still. There's um, three ladies and another guy, Tony Gobey's involved oh, here. Tony, Tony's of course. Tony's involved yes, as well, yeah. but three ladies who are yeah. family members of past players from the early yeah, days. Yeah, They're doing a fantastic job yeah. along with Paul. Paul's the driving force. You always need a chief. We've got a chief here. Yeah. <laughs> right, I think.